In this tutorial, we're going to learn the basics of working with numbers variables. Now, when you work with variables, it's always a three step process create your variable, create a trigger that adjusts the value of the variable, and then create a trigger that uses the value of that variable to do something. In this particular example, we created a variable that we called count clicks. And what we want to do is count the number of times I'm making a wrong choice. After the third attempt, to answer the question, I want to give you some feedback. So in this particular example, we have four objects. And I can click on one of these objects. Now this is obviously the right one, so we won't click on that. So when I click on a wrong one, I'm going to add one to my count clicks variable. And I can click on it again, and it adds another one. So now count clicks is equal to two. And I can come down here and click on one of these and count clicks now is going to become three and I can see I get my feedback layer. And then down here I have two triggers. One is that I hide this layer so that wipes out this information. And the other thing is I have a trigger on here that adjusts the variable and changes it back to zero. So when I do that, it resets count clicks and now I can click, click, and click and it's back at three. So let's see how this is built. What we have is our starter slide. And you should have this in the download, so go ahead and open it up. And we've got our objects here. We've got our feedback layer, so all that stuff is ready for you to go. Now it's just a matter of putting it all together. So the first thing we need to do is create a variable. So go up here to the variables box, click on that. We already have a count clicks variable, so let's just go ahead and we'll create one called count three. So I'm going to create a variable. I can title the variable whatever I want to. I'm just going to call this count three. So now I know I'm counting three clicks or let's say count three clicks. And I like to separate the words with capital letters, but you can do whatever you want to with your variable. So count three clicks. So now I know what this is doing. It's a good way to title your variable so you understand what they are. Now in this case, it's going to be a number variable and the starting value is zero. So we hit OK. So now we can see we have a count three clicks variable and the default value is zero. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Now here's a tip when you're working with variables because sometimes you're not sure if things are working right and you're not quite sure what the variable is currently set at. So what you can do is insert a text box and we'll just insert it up here in the corner. And then we'll insert a reference to the variable so we always see what the variable's current value is. So just go to insert and over here you see reference and then you can select your variable. So we'll choose count three clicks. And the easy thing to do is just do percentage sign, the name of the variable and percentage sign. So now if we preview this, it's going to show us that it's currently at zero. So I just do that so I always know what the value is. And then when I'm ready to publish the course, I delete all that stuff. So let's go ahead and close that. And now let's create our first trigger. So the first thing we want to do is have a trigger that adjusts the value of the variable when I click on a wrong object. So this is a wrong object here. So let's select that. And I want to add a trigger. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? I want to adjust variable. So it's down here in the more section. I select my variable, in this case count three clicks. And then what do I want to do? I want to add, and you can see you've got other options here. So I want to add the value. So we'll choose our value here. And we'll say one when the user clicks on the flashlight. So if we read the variable, adjust the variable count clicks, we're going to add one when the user clicks on the flashlight. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And let's preview this and see what happens. When I click on this, we should see this go up by one. Click, 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 click. So you can see it just keeps going up. So the variable just keeps changing. Now I can use this value of the variable to do something. So in this case, we're going to say if you click on the wrong object three times, we want to display a feedback layer. So let's do this first. Let's take the trigger we created here and apply it to the other two objects because these are also wrong objects. So the, again, the nice thing with Storyline is I can select a trigger, copy it, and then I'm going to select these two objects, and then I'm just going to paste it. And so you can see 
that I don't even have to do anything unless I wanted to adjust the numbers. So now if we preview this, we should see that they all can adjust the value of the variable. So that's all working right. So the triggers are working right. Now what we want to do is create another trigger. In this case, the trigger is going to be show this feedback layer, which is try again. We want to show that when the value of that variable is equal to three. So let's go ahead and create a trigger. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? I want to show a layer. So I select my layer, the try again. And when do I want to show that layer? I want to show that layer when a variable changes. So I'd select my variable, count three clicks, and now I need to have my conditions. So what's the condition for that change? So we're going to add a condition. So the variable, so if count three clicks is equal to the value of three. So if we look at it, we want to show that layer try again when the variable changes. So count three is our variable when count three is equal to three. So I hit OK. So now let's go ahead and preview this slide. Now we're counting clicks. There's one, there's two. When we hit three, it should show that layer. And there you go. And so everything's working. Now we're going to allow them to try again. So we're going to put a option here to close this out. So let's go to try again. We're going to put a trigger on this little X here. Let's go ahead and add a trigger. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? I want to hide the layer when this layer, when the user clicks on this object. So let's preview this. Count. There's one, there's two, there's three. I can let you try again. I want to hide the layer. I can click. Oh, you know what's going to happen? This is never going back to zero, so it's always going to keep going up, and I'll never get that feedback layer again. So let's go ahead and clear out the value of the variable. So let's close the preview. So we come back here. What do we want to do? We want that value of that variable to be reset or go back to zero when we click on this button. So let's go ahead and create a trigger. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? If you're not quite sure, just talk through the triggers and it'll all kind of start to make sense because the options are what do I want to do? So I can click the drop down and look at all the different things I can do. And then the whens, when can I do those things? So you really can look at these things. So let's do this. So what do I want to do? I want to adjust the variable. So it's just like we did at the first step. Choose my variable, count three clicks. What I want to do is, hmm, let's figure this out. I want to adjust the variable. So what do I want to do? I could do minus three because I know it's going to be at three. So I can do value um, subtract three and that'll take it to zero when the user clicks on that object and that would work. Let's think if there's some other ways. So I could, let's see, adjust variables. I can create an assignment and set the value to zero. Let's see if that works. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And let's preview this and see what happens. One, two, three, click on it, it set it back to zero. So either way would have worked. I could have assigned a static value, which is what we did, so I know it's always going to go to zero. Or because I knew it was at three, I could subtract three. The point here is that even if you don't know everything you can do, just talk through the trigger. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? And then look at your what options and look at your when options. And you can kind of work through it. And this is where the reference point really comes in handy. So you've got this reference here so you can always see what the value of the variable is. This way if you're trying to troubleshoot, you can first make sure all your variables are changing. And then you can try to figure out why uh, things aren't working the way you want them to work. And then when you're done, instead of deleting that, because you may need that again, you can either move it off slide or you can just go to your timeline and then you can just hide that and then it's not visible.
And of course, you want to get in the habit of titling those things. So you may want to title this as a variable reference. That's basically it. So again, when you work with variables, create the variable. It's just an empty bucket. So it doesn't matter what you name it. Just create the variable and then create a trigger that adjusts the value of the variable and then create a trigger that based on the value of the variable you can do other things. In this case we showed a layer but there are other things that you can do as well. Now it's just a matter of you practicing this activity, finding a reason to use variables and then applying it to your next e-learning course.